this is the last one tonight, so yo, just give a big hand to all the groups and everybody earlier tonight. Donovan, the faces, Guns and Roll, every the beasties. A lot of people are upset that uh, Axel did not come tonight, but let's face it, even if he was coming tonight, he wouldn't have been here by now. <laughs> wouldn't have been here. <laughs> like, where the fuck is Axel? Um, I'm Chris Rock, and I am here to induct the Red Hot Chili Peppers into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. From Los Angeles, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Rock! And it's a, it's, a, it's a huge honor. Let me tell you about the first time I saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now, my friends and I liked drugs a lot growing up. And so when we went out, we had to get to the party really early, because if we didn't go early, we were just going to spend our money getting high. So we went to this party. We thought we were going to go see Grandmaster Flash in the village. And we went to see Flash, and we got there at 8 o'clock, and we are like, OK, this is cool. We didn't spend our money getting high. We're going to see Flash. But we fucked up, and Flash was down the block. And we, went, and we went to this other spot, and we went to see the Chili Peppers. And we didn't know we were there to see the Chili Peppers until later in the evening, we started seeing all these white people. And we're like, what the fuck is this shit? There's a lot of white people coming to see Flash. We'd never even heard of Chili Peppers. And they came out and they sang some shit. I couldn't understand a fucking word they said. And then they had socks on their dicks. And I'd never been to like a, a white show before, so I thought all white groups put socks on their dicks. Now it's years later, and they are one of the biggest groups in the world. We're at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now they have black ties on their dicks tonight. But let me tell you about the Chili Peppers, OK? If Brian Wilson and George Clinton had a kid, he'd be as ugly as fuck. But he would sound like the Chili Peppers. He'd be funky. Okay, the Red Hot Chili Peppers are the quintessential California band. They, their sound is authentic to California, much like the Mamas and the Papas, uh, uh, Jan and Dean, the Beach Boys. But also, they mix it in with a little iced tea, a little king tea, a little NWA. You hear all of those influences in the Red Hot Chili Peppers, okay? The thing I love about the Peppers is that it's, the music is so happy, but at the same time, it's hardcore. It's hardcore 
happiness, okay? Because you know, they sing about a happy that you had to be sad to get there, okay? So when, when Anthony sings about, you know, taking it on the other side, you know that motherfucker was on the other side, okay? When they sing scar tissue, you know they got scars, okay? They're like Robert Downey, okay? They did a lot of drugs, but then they did Iron Man, and that shit's over. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck about that shit, okay? Okay? Now, I'd like, you know, list some of their accomplishments right now. They have, I don't know, eight Grammys. They, they are the baddest live band in the world. They have over 85 million records sold, okay? Sold out stadiums. They have influenced countless bands all over the world. I want you to please welcome one of the best rock groups, one of the best rap groups, one of the best reggae groups, one of the best ska groups, one of the best polka groups. It is my pleasure to induct into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Anthony Kiedis, Michael Flea, Chad Smith, Josh Colin, John Bushanti, Hillel Slovak Jackass, and Cliff Martinez, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's been 26 years since I've played with this band, so tonight I'm thrilled and honored to be standing here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Thank you guys for letting me join the party and for giving the planet something good to listen to. May you continue to rock out with your sock out for many years to come. I just want to thank my lovely wife, Danae, for all the years of support. My kids, uh, my folks for letting us all play in our bedroom when we were about 13, um, and all the great musicians I've had a chance to play with. For all the uh, years of perseverance, hard work, and great music, thanks for having me, guys. I'm uh, accepting this award on behalf of my brother, Halal Slovak. He will always be missed. Hello loved his music, family, friends, and his fans. He was much more than a musician. He was also an innovator. We celebrate and honor his legacy and his amazing accomplishments and his life. Thank you very much. First of all, I have to thank my mother who's sitting over here. I love you, Mom. Thanks for putting up with all the drums in the basement all those years. Uh, my father as well is not with us anymore. He got me these uh, Lincoln Log drumsticks and ice cream tubs out of the back of a Baskin Robbins, and that was my first drum set. And my father was uh, loved music and. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be out here without him. And I love him very much, and we all miss him. So, God. just to, to our fans, you know, our fans. It's odd because we're looking back at our career tonight, but, but we're just getting started, you know? We're just getting started, you know? So, um, thanks again. This is such an honor. I'm truly humbled and honored. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I would like to uh, congratulate the other inductees this evening. Um, the Beastie Boys, we came up at the same time, and it warms my heart to, uh, to see them inducted. I love them so much. And uh, Guns N' Roses, 
I used to play football in the street with Steven Adler when we were 13 years old. I grew up two blocks from Slash. We knew each other when we were kids. And um, it's really beautiful to, uh, you know, to, to see them inducted tonight. And congratulations to them, as well as the other inductees. Um, I see George Clinton there. And I just want to say, George, I love you, man. Dr. Frankenstein, you get, you've given me reason to live so many times when life has been so hard. I love you, man. Um, I love music so much. And all the great rockers that have come before us, it, it means everything in the world to me to honor that tradition. Um, and every single day, Every night before we go on stage, I get on my fucking knees and I pray to God and I pray to uplift the people that have come to see us play and to, to love them and to give the best that I can to them. Um, that's my life's mission. But mostly, more than anything, the burning, intense desire that is inside of me to play music that has not diminished in the slightest, that has only deepened as time has gone on, is when we're hitting it, when we are really inside the groove, when we're on, I'm lost, man. And in that moment, I am truly free of everything, and I am truly one with everything. Um, I want to say, Mom, I love you, Mom. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, and I just want to take a minute um, for Halel Slovak, who was our dear, dear friend, who I never would have started playing bass unless he asked me to. I love you, Halel. You're always my brother. Thank you. Um, I just want to take a minute to uh, honor the great musician, John Frusciante. <laughs> who is a huge part of our band. Um, he wrote so, many, so much great shit for us. He left us with so many amazing gifts. And the connection and the depth of our bond musically changed my life forever. Um, and uh, Chad and Anthony, man. <laughs> I love you guys, man. Every day I'm so lucky to get to play with these guys and Josh. The journey continues. You're a fucking amazing artist. Thank you for being with us. Um, I love music. I love to play. It's given me everything. It's given me a reason. It's saved me a million times. Thank you so much, humbly, uh, for honoring us this evening. Thank you. Flea is an all-time rocker. I just want you to know. I met Flea when I was 15 years old. And uh, I thought I knew something, but I didn't know that much. And, uh, and they talk about being in the right place in the right time. Well, I was in the right place in the right time when I met Flea. He would change my life forever and for the better, and we're still together. That was 35 years ago. Um, the next guy I met that would change my life was Hillel Slovak when I was 16. And, uh, and these guys knew about music, they practiced hard, and, and I didn't know anything about practicing music or, or playing, but I loved these guys, and, and they invited me into their musical circle, and by the time we were 20, um, a chap by the name of Gary Allen suggested, you know, why don't you give that guy Anthony a crack on the mic? And they're like, what? Anthony? Mike? That makes no sense. And, and Gary's like, just give him a shot. And uh, we wrote a song. And we performed that song, and for the first time in my life, I knew what my purpose was going to be. So Jack and, and Flea, I have to thank you for giving me purpose to my life. Um, early on in the history of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, I was struggling with uh, some demons and some, some drug addiction, and my, my band were being very uh, compassionate and patient with, with my issues. And, one day I stayed up a little too late and um, I was hung over and passed out and I think, I think Flea had kind of come to the end of his rope and he came and he found me in my little um, one room apartment above a pizza parlor 
And he said, Anthony, man, you're just, you're fucked up. I, I, I don't know that I can, I, I don't know that I can do this anymore. And I, and I came out of my stupor and I kind of cleared my eyes and I said, but flee. I was going to be the James Brown of the 80s. <laughs> and, and the look on his face was like, shit, you, you, you were, weren't you? Okay, let's, let's keep going. And he, <laughs> and he forgave me. It's like one more time, you know, my friends had love and forgiveness and, and that was just the, you know, the beginning of many times that I would require a little love and forgiveness from the guys that would end up becoming my family. Um, you know, and, and nothing could ever compare to the, the low of, of losing Hillel Slovak in his prime. You know, we were young men and we were living hard and, and very unschooled in the ways of life and, uh, and we lost you know, the heart and soul and the architect of the Red Hot Chili Peppers at a very young point in time when he was just getting ready to, uh, you know, keep changing the world with his music. He left us with something which was a band and, and a love and a desire to, to carry on in everything we do. He will always be with us forever. He's with us right now. And, um, and, and like so many things, when disasters happen, beautiful things are born from them. And, and the next thing that was born was the, the entrance of John Frusciante. He's just one of you know, the most amazing artists on earth. And we were lucky to have him in this band twice and write music with him. We are forever grateful to you, John Frusciante. Um, we've been able to work with some of the coolest, most amazing minds in music, including the man I'm looking at right now, Rick Rubin. I love you, Rick. Sitting right next to George Clinton, who I love so much. Both guys are a dream come true for us. We were kids, and they said, if you could have anybody in the world produce you, who would it be? We said, George Clinton. They said, done. We're like, what? The next thing you know, we're in Detroit, Michigan, tracking with George. And, um, and yeah, now it's time to play some music, so thanks for hanging in. Hello, Julie. Hello, Jenny. Thanks for your patience. Lots of love, everybody. Waiting for 
All right, now, who's ever playing with us, make yourself known. Be a guitar player, drummer, fiddler. Fan. I fucking love it, it's cool. Yeah.